<laughs> Happy Wednesday. <laughs> yes, Wednesday. We keep thinking it's Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's all not. Day. It's Wednesday. It's funny. So that's a good thing. Um, how was your workout? My workout was good. You today, were Zoomy today. Today I was Zoomy. Well, because I'm trying to get the cardio boots back in because the Working out at night to do the cardio wasn't quite working. Mm -hmm. So I added my 10 minute cardio blitz to the workout, but I also did chest, biceps, forearms, and calves. That's so I was impressive. zooming, zooming, zoom, yeah. all in an hour and a half, about, give or take a few minutes. I did back today and yeah. some core. Right. So that's what I did. And then I talked to Pat because she had a question. Huh? So <laughs> always happy to help. Yep, exactly. Good morning, Kristen. It's good to see morning, you. Morning, Kristen. There's Pat now. Hey, Pat. <laughs> nice to see her join too. Um, so I have a lot I want to cover with you guys today. So we'll get we'll jump right into it. Um, we watched a um, interview last night from Dr. Lyle, and he's a psychologist who works in the whole food plant based space. And he talks a lot about. I've talked a little bit about his work around the pleasure trap mm -hmm. and how hard it is to change the standard American diet once you're on it. And I think the most shocking thing that he said in the interview was there was a study that they did with rats where they fed yeah. the rats normal standard rat pellet food and they were <laughs> happy and they ate it and they were a good weight and it was right. fine. And then they switched them to the standard American diet, you know, high fat, yeah. high protein, you know, all the high stuff. Um, and of course they got fat. They got fat. Yes. <laughs> but shocking. then they decided they were going to switch them back. And so they switched them back to standard rat pellet food and they refused to eat it for 14, 14 days, days. <laughs> 14 days. These rats would rather not eat right. after having the standard American diet right. than eat normal rat pellet food that they were perfectly happy with before. Right. And he, he talked, Good morning, Wendy. Thanks yes, for morning, being Wendy. here. He talked about how um, they had that, you know, it was like that theory that if we wait out, if we wait them out, they'll put the good stuff back. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. And he talked about how in humans, when they're back when we were, you know, having to scrounge for food and we were hunter gatherers, there was meat now and then, and right. we would eat it. But if there was only a little bit, you know, I've always, and I say to you guys is if you can catch an antelope with a stick, go ahead and eat it. But the thing was, you catch an antelope with a stick, and then you have to share it with everybody in the group. Right, right. You know, we're group creatures. Um, but if you get a big animal, like maybe you catch a water buffalo, then there's a lot of food, and they that the human body is designed to do is called cram, right. which is eat more than you would normally eat because high, high, qual not quality, that's the wrong word, high calorie food. High density, I think you use high, it. High density, high calorie right. food is available in quantity, and because it's rarely available and you want to be able to get as much of it as you can at, the, at a time, you cram. Right. Now, the unfortunate thing is that that behavior as the standard American diet it's always available. So we can always cram. We could cram three meals a day. Yes. And many of us do. We right. eat way past the point of feeling full because we don't we don't pay attention to those signals. Well, a lot ahead. of times it's, you know, I paid uh, forty dollars for a steak, I'm eating it all. Right. Whether you're full or not. You just the thought of leaving something behind that you paid a lot of money for, you know. Right. So the and we've talked before about how the standard American diet, also called the Western diet is engineered specifically to taste good, to override your I'm full, I've had enough sensors, right. and, and to make us eat more than we actually need. Yeah. So it makes us Crave fat it. and sick. And crave it. Right, and, yeah. and addicted. And right. I think that that's the part of it that we don't really focus on enough, is that if I say to you, eat plants, and you're like, I don't want to give up my steak, yeah. and you're really adamant about that, yeah. That's something to look at. That might be an addiction issue, That's not right. just a, I like my steak. Well, okay, but why? I think probably addicting both psychologically and physically. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, he was talking about how our bodies try really hard to associate, to distribute, that's the right word, distribute resources for health everywhere because your body wants to be healthy. But if you're making it process these high density, high calorie foods, on a consistent basis because you're using the cram mechanism right then your body can't be healthy because it's having to process that food that isn't is not actually designed to process in large quantities so he talked about the um, natural hygiene theory and i'm gonna have to learn more about that because i'm really interested in, in what the natural hygiene theory is but he said that it comes down to um, mimicking kind of how our ancient ancestors lived 
on plant food, mm -hmm. exercise, time outside, and that there was intermittent fasting. And we've talked about right. that some, that, that that's the difference, right? They could cram when they caught a water buffalo, but then they might not get another food, more food again for a while and they would right. have to fast. Right. And we don't do that. Well, we do, but as Americans, we don't. Yeah, I mean, they even, <clears throat> Even watching fantasy movies, mm -hmm. they do that, right? I mean, they always talk about breaking feasts. We talk about medieval movies or you know, people fast. that are breaking fast. Uh, we people that are fans of like Game of Thrones, for instance, mm -hmm. right? It's always it's always about you know you've gone a certain period of time without eating, so you want to break your fast. And so I mean, it's it's always been around, mm -hmm. but we've never um, acclimated it into our diet. Yeah, the standard American right. diet. But so Dr. Lyle said something really interesting. He said that he would um, challenge any doctor to take 10,000 people with any disease, doesn't matter, right. 300 different diseases, doesn't right. matter, 10,000 people, 300 different diseases, put and put half of them on standard medicine. Right, pharmaceuticals. What, whatever the standard, um, what do you, treatment, that's treatment. the word I'm looking for, treatment for that disease is, and then put half of them on the natural hygiene theory, which is, you know, plant-based eating, taking, you know, really good care of themselves, all of the stuff we know is good for us. Right. And he said that it wouldn't even be a competition, yeah. that the plant-based eating would blow away the standard treatment right. um, on on average for people. That's not to say medicine's not good. There's a time medicine and place has for its it. Place. Absolutely. So we're not saying that. What we're saying is if you give your body optimum opportunity, it's going to be better. Right. And as we've always, uh, as, as not we've always said, but all the research we've done, documents we've watched, books we've read, say is that medicine treats the symptoms. Right. Right. Whole food plant-based dieting works towards curing. The Treat, it treats the actual right. cause. Right. So that's, you know, so, and they can work in tandem. Yeah, you they can, can do both. Absolutely. Like you can eat healthy and you can, you know, take as, as we say with people that are diabetic. Hey, that, Victoria, good to see that, you. Um, when they go on a whole food plant-based diet, that you should also talk with their physician. Because mm -hmm. a physician, as time goes on, may want to lower the prescriptions or eventually take them off of them. Right. Victoria was saying that the standard treatment is about, about making money. And I yes. learned something interesting last night in this lecture that I did not know about medicine. So the, the paradigm that we use for medicine and the way that we treat doctors was originally designed, and they said who designed it, and it was a big name, and I can't remember now what name it was, but it was originally designed with the idea of finding ways to treat people that could be patented and that money could be made right. on it. It right. was all about being able to patent it. Right. So you're right, Victoria, it's about making money. Yeah. And that's not to say doctors are evil, I'm not saying no. I'm nope. just saying that the way the paradigm works, it's about money, not about it's health. A, it's a broken system. It was right. never set up correctly. It was set up for the wrong reasons. Right. And so Dr. Lyle also pointed out something that was really interesting. He said that within any animal kingdom that you look at, if an animal gets sick, it goes on a water fast right. and allows its body to heal. So yesterday someone asked, what should I eat when I have the flu? And that idea that he shared made me wonder, if you have the flu, is hydration your biggest asset right. and just let your body heal don't make it process food right. Right. and i don't know that i haven't researched it but that was my thought i was like you know he's right when animals get sick they fast and his point was why wait until you're so deathly sick that your stomach says i can't eat and give me a break right. why wait that long that give it point. a break first that was the point he was making right is that when we get real real sick you know uh cancer patients they have to chemotherapy or whatever they can't eat. There's, and, and that's probably their body telling them, I need to heal. Stop giving me food so I have to work on doing that. You're killing me with other things. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. so I thought that that was interesting. That he, and he said that in their, their clinic that he's had p diabetic patients come in with their ankles black. black. Their feet are black. Basically amputee, amputee, like ready to be amputated. Their doctors are saying we have to amputate. There's nothing we can do for you. Right. And he said in his clinic on a 10 day water fast, he can get the circulation back and they can start to be able to walk again right. and feel their he feet. He said they did. He said he's had patients. He's had it happen. Yeah. And that to me is shocking. Now I am not qualified to put anybody on a 10 day water fast, right. so I'm not going to recommend that. But the fact that it's that powerful to just let your body heal right. and to accept that your body wants to be in a state of health is amazing to me. Right. I think what we are willing to do, though, is if um, people have issues like this and they reach out to us, we'll, we'll give them the information and we'll say this is the person to contact. I mean, that doctor says he puts time aside to talk to average people 
that may have issues. I actually want to see if I can get on his calendar to get an interview yeah. with him and so, talk to him myself. But you know, I'm happy to help people with diabetes, and I I absolutely can can help people. But once you have black feet, I think that's beyond that's, where, that's where I am yes. right now. Yes. Um, he also made an interesting point that health is like a chain. It's not you don't change one link in the chain and everything else stays the same. If you change one link, the whole chain kind of adjusts to what you do to that link. Right. And so I think that medicine, modern medicine, has a really what. I don't know. They they go down to the nitty gritty and they look at just this one piece and they mm -hmm. want to treat just this one thing and then they say, oh, there's side effects. Well, those side effects are you impacting the rest of the chain right. when you're looking at this one little link. Right. So that's something to consider too. And I know we've said it before, but being whole food, plant based, you positively affect everything. Everything. There's no negative side effects <laughs> to eating plants. Well, yeah, the side effects. I mean, unless are, you eat poisonous plants. Don't right. Do exactly. That. Don't do that. Side <laughs> effects are good health, no diabetes, no cardiovascular disease. You know, the list goes on and on and on and on. Right. Exactly. You know, and he points out, and we've said this before, that health is the natural state of being. Right. You know, and and doctors only ever see people in the disease in the disease state. state. Like you don't go to the doctor when you're healthy. Right. You're not, hey, I'm here, look, I'm great. That's not when you go, you go when you're sick. And so right. they only ever see sick people. Right. So that that's an interesting way that it kind of might warp their reality. It's like cops only ever see bad people. So they assume everybody is bad. Like they have a predisposition to assume someone's bad before. So maybe doctors just make that assumption too. And what was interesting about that particular interview was that he was being interviewed by a doctor, an MD. Right. Right. And and she had gone into being whole food plant based, mm -hmm. and she bring brought her family along. Not, I mean, they're all older. I mean, her kids are like eighteen. Teenagers, yeah, yeah. coming close to college age. But she's brought them along, and um, she is also seemed discouraged by the inability for um, medical schools uh, to educate doctors on Nutrition. these types of benefits. Yeah, and and she's very disappointed in that. Once doctors get out of medical school, they seem really close-minded close -minded, to nutrition. Yeah. yeah. So we've talked now a good bit about how the uh, how the system is rigged against us to make us healthy. <laughs> Laura's like, everyone is bad. <laughs> no, not everyone. Not everyone. <laughs> not no. everyone. Lots of people, but not everyone. Um, oh, my phone's ringing. I should have turned my ringer off. But so I want to talk about why is it so hard when you decide? Okay, I hear you guys. I understand that I should eat more plants. I need to change my diet more to, you know, plant-based. Why is it so hard? And so Dr. Lyle talked about something called the, uh, the esteem dynamic. And it, yeah. he was talking about how as humans, because we are group creatures, right? You, if you live on the community, Serengeti, yeah. you have to have your community or you end up dead. Right. Um, the value you have in that community, community is relevant right. because if the community doesn't like you, they ostracize you and you get eaten by a lion. Right. That's not preferable. Not fun. So it's not good for reproduction. No. So basically, um, humans have two drives. One is survival, one is reproduction, right. and being eaten by a lion isn't good for either of those things. No. So when you feel as an individual that you're going to change, but your community, whoever you have in your circle, feels that the change that you're making is weird or odd or they don't like it right. or they sabotage it, there's actually a part of your brain that says this is dangerous right. because your brain at an unconscious level knows you need your community to not get eaten by a lion. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of have to overcome the, this is dangerous aspect of it emotionally. And his, um, his website is esteemdynamics.org. I will post that. I'll also post the uh, link to the interview we watched. It's an hour and 20 minutes long yeah, or something. something like that. A little bit more it's a little that. long, but if you want to watch it, I highly encourage that. Um, so yeah, we care about what our friends think. The other thing that's super interesting is that if your friends believe in you at a higher level than you believe in yourself, you won't try. Right. And I've talked about this before that it's safer to be mediocre right. and and not and just say, well, I'm not trying, so of course I'm not doing it, than it is to try and fail as far as esteem dynamics go. Right. And he used the example of you'll see this with kids whose um, parents are like, You're great, you're awesome, you can do anything you want, you're so smart. And then all of a sudden the kid starts failing out of everything. 
And it's because the kid is like, look at me not trying. So I, I can't, I'm not succeeding because yeah. I'm just not trying. Right. So it's Rather not that than, I can't. It's, it's not that, that I can't, I just not choose to. not to. Right. It's for the for the Seinfeld fans out there. I have to throw this out there. Uh -oh. It's it's like it's the old leaving on a high note, and people that are Seinfeld fans will know what that means. Right, exactly. Yeah. So we do that when it comes to our diet and our exercise. If the people around us think we're crazy, then we won't do it because that's dangerous, right? We'll get eaten by a right. lion. But if the people around us are like holding us up as this hero, and they're like, "You can do this. We're so proud of you. Off you go to battle." We're like, "No, I might not." succeed. Yes. I'm not going to try. Yep. Right. I'm a hero. Well, look at me being a hero. Right. And he used the example of if you're a boxer and you have the heavyweight title and yeah. then a challenger comes along that you think you can't beat, you don't want to fight him. Right. You avoid that. Fight. Right. You avoid that fight. But if you're the challenger and you're like, I can beat this guy, you want to get in that ring immediately, if not, <laughs> if sooner. not sooner. And so that's what we run into when we start trying to change the standard American diet is first of all, we've got the addiction to the high fat, high density, high, you know, for our cramming desires. So you've got an addiction, a personal addiction that you're fighting. And I know there's people out there like, I'm not addicted. Yeah. That's, we can have a conversation about that's that. A that's, a separate, conversation that's a separate for a issue. Different time. Um, so you've got the, the addiction to the high fat food, the high processed engineered to make you eat more so they can make money food. And then you've got the esteem dynamics of your community and the people that you love and care about on whether they believe about believe in you too little, like you're gonna fail, why would you bother? Right. Or too much where you're like, I might not make it and then they're gonna be disappointed in me. Right. I mean, and that puts them in a bind because how do you know exactly how much you should believe in someone? Right. right. <laughs> so that that creates the challenge. So those are two things that are already, already um, creating an issue. Then there's a third issue where as humans, we can either be too open to new information, which means you're gullible and you could be lied to and you do things that aren't healthy and good because right. there's information about that. So you're too open. AKA the Atkins diet. Or, <laughs> we talked about that yesterday. Yes. Or you can be too closed minded and too stuck in your paradigm where, you know, what I know is what I know and I know it's right and you're not open to any new information at all. And that's what I think I run into the most. Yeah. I think that's the one that I run into the most where people are just so set in their beliefs and, and what they've known their whole lives. And they're not even based in science. And they're not based on anything other than this is the way it's always been. I'm not changing. Mm -hmm. You know? So you've got, we've, we've got that issue we're fighting where, well, if I'm too open, I'm gullible. But if I'm too closed, then I, I'm unwilling to learn. And that's not good either. Right. So we have to find that even medium where, you know, we're smart and we do critical thinking. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. And if it does, then I need to be willing to change. Right. And that's the space I try really hard to stand in is this is what I believe and this is what I know based on the science. But if you have science that shows something else, I'm willing to hear that out. Oh, and yeah, critically absolutely. think about it. The, in, we welcome it because mm -hmm. we like more information that can educate us and tell us a different path or a better path. We're open to that. Right. And so then you have to ask, am I willing to admit that maybe I don't know for my well-being and for right. my health? Right. Don't you guys love all my notes I'm, I've got here? I love my notes. They're so much fun. Um, I don't take notes. I watch the same stuff, but I don't take notes. <laughs> um, and he, he said that in 100 years, they're going to look back at the way that we eat and how we push back on eating healthy, and they're going to think that we're crazy and stupid. They're, like, right. you know, the, if we look at the medical stuff that they did 100, 150 years ago, we're like, what were they thinking? Butchers. Right? <laughs> That he says that in 100 years, they're going to look back at the standard American diet and be like, people were killing themselves. Right. And the information was there for them not to, and they did it mm -hmm. anyway. And uh, what I forget which it was or what show was talking about or what documentary about how this is going to be the, the um, millennials might be the, the first uh, generation. generation not to outlive their parents. Their parents will live longer because, yeah. because of the, the way we eat the and standard that's American scary. diet. That's scary. Yeah. So anybody who's a parent out there, think about losing your child. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, and so th the thing that he asked to think about is, is the food you're choosing to eat super normal, mm -hmm. which means it's somehow engineered to make you want to eat it more than you would if it were just as it came out of the ground. Right. So that that was interesting. Well, too. you know, what was interesting too that he talked about, and and it's different than what we've previously heard. And so we've previously, we've previously heard that if you switch to a whole food plant-based diet, your taste buds would change in about three weeks. You'll start seeing a change. 
He was talking about four months. I didn't experience that personally. I didn't either, but it's interesting because we were never really hardcore Western dieters. Right, that's true. I mean, true. we did eat chicken, and, and but we always We never things. ate a lot of processed food. We didn't have a lot of um, dressings. And we didn't eat out and, a lot. And, right, exactly. Yeah. So uh, maybe it was easier for us. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to know that because if you're expecting to – your taste buds to change in three weeks or it's not working type of attitude, that might not understand be that, that according to this person – um, Dr. Lyle. Dr. Lyle, mm -hmm. that it, it, it really is about a four-month process. And he made the point we made yesterday, which is if you're switching back and forth, yes, your taste right. buds don't – you become yeah. like that rat that's like, I'm not eating that, that's yucky. Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. And so he, he talked about taste buds like your eardrums when you listen to loud music. Right. That when you listen to loud music, like the next day you feel like you're all muffled because your eardrums are damaged from the really loud music. Mm -hmm. He said that's what happens to your taste buds when you eat – the standard American, American diet, diet is it? Be, they become damaged, and and we've talked before how you eat regular food and it's like you know that's a medium level uh, pleasure, right. right? And but then you eat super normal food and it goes up to this high level. But if you eat super normal food consistently, super normal food becomes the medium, the medium level. Right. And then if you eat normal food again, suddenly that's low level pleasure, and you're like, right. nah, I don't eat that. Right. So it, it's really interesting how hard it is to move your body toward. The healthier eating. Um, oh, and he, he talked about how people people's expectation of weight loss is in the weeds yeah. because he said there's so many of these pop diets out there, mm -hmm. not pop like soda, but like you know the, fat, the bad the diets, day, yeah. yeah, out there that go on this diet and lose 10 pounds in 10 days. And he's like, that's not real weight loss. No, it's like, it's temporary. It's sodium. It's you know water. It's not real. He said. If you're really overweight, you might lose two pounds a week, right. maybe. We had we lost about a pound a week, which is pretty yeah, standard. Yeah, which is about standard, right? Yeah. So that's something to 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 consider. Um, let me see if I have anything else here that's really important. I talked about cramming. Oh, he said that even on the the uh, whole food plant based diet, that nuts because they're so rich can activate the cram yes. sensors if you're prone to that. Right. That you can that eating nuts can be something that is really easy to eat a whole lot of them and they are calorie dense they and fat high. Dense. Yeah. So something to consider, um, you know, if you're struggling with that is maybe nuts aren't something that you, we yeah. eat them. We but do. We don't. I don't. We don't seem to have that issue. No. I can eat a handful of almonds and then walk away from right. them and don't exactly. even think about it. Well, also, so, ours aren't salted and they don't have any oils. No, they're not. They're, not. they're just, they're just raw. raw. Yeah. And I think that makes a big. That's a big deal too. Yeah. I talked about trying and not failing. Um, yeah, if you don't believe you can, you won't try just because it's easier to be mediocre right. than it is to fail. Right. Especially if you've had evidence, he, this is an interesting point, especially if you've had evidence that you failed at a diet before. Yeah. You're unlikely to want to try something new if you failed at a diet before. And so you, what, what people do is they procrastinate. And how often do we hear people say, oh, I'll start tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I'll start Monday. And they push it off because they're, they're afraid of failure. And so they, right. don't have, they don't have a support system. So then the question is, okay, so you're telling me that the standard American diet is addictive. You told me why it's easy to eat. You told me that's really difficult to get off of. I need to get off of it. What do I do? Here's what you do. First of all, you've got to get yourself some support from people who believe in you and are willing to understand the esteem dynamics and the risk that you feel like, well, what if I fail? And that are willing to allow you to make mistakes and to slip. We yeah. don't ever tell anybody, go 100% tomorrow. Right. Now, no, if you're diabetic and your ankles are black, you probably should. Yeah. But the people that work with us are typically people that I can say, let's just start changing it slowly. So get right. the support you need. And then start changing things slowly. Start looking at how you're eating currently. Start looking at how you can in integrate some of the foods that we talk about, like the whole grains and the good starches right. and the, the beans that are so good for you. Um, somebody pointed out, and I knew about this and I hadn't shared it with you, there's an app out there called The Daily Dozen. It's by uh, Dr. Greger, who wrote How Not to Die. And it talks about the 12 things you should eat every day. There's so much food on that app, I can't eat that much food. Right. Like, it's yeah. crazy how much food he has on there. But that's a fun app if you want to be able to – it has check boxes where you can check yeah. off. I ate this stuff today. So that's one to look for, um, the Daily Dozen, it's called. And I have it on my phone. I don't use it, but I do have it. But have an accountability community that is going to help you and support you. And be willing to start where you are. It's a right. personal odyssey. You can't just decide 
to start somewhere else because you're not there. So start where you are mm -hmm. and look at what the easy parts, you know, they always say pick the low hanging fruit first. Look at the easy parts to change for you first. Um, people have started coming up to me quite a bit and saying, well, I've changed this one thing. And I'm like, yay, that's phenomenal. Yeah. So those are my tips is to just get to get started is find help, find support and then start with the easy things first and pick one thing you want to change and then give yourself time. Be kind to yourself and go through it. It took us eight months to get right. from, we're going to do this all the way to where we are now. And it may take you longer. You know, Russ and I were talking about it yesterday. We're, we were competitive athletes. We have that hardcore do it because it's the right thing um, attitude, attitude yep. in our past. And not everybody has that. That's why everybody's not competitive athletes. So be kind to yourself, but you can do it. And I believe in you, not in so much as I want you to not try because I think you'll fail, but enough to say you can do it. And if you slip back, we'll pull you back forward. And, and just always keep in mind that the hardest part of any journey is the first step. Yeah, deciding, you know what, yeah. this is not right for me. My yeah. health journey is not going where well, I want it to go. Once you take that first step, though, everything just seems to fall into place. So I loved this interview. So I will post the link in the comments when we get um, off. So I, I absolutely love this interview. I think it's very informative. And I'll post his website as well. She's a little hard to understand sometimes. She is. She talks really fast. Yeah. But esteemdynamics.org is um, Dr. Lyle's website. And um, I'll post that as well. So. Thanks for being here. Yes. If you get pleasure or joy or information value out of these videos, please do like them, share, share them, them yeah. um, let other people know. Um, it can make it's a difference of life or death for some people, whether they have this information or right. not. And we're working very hard every day on the website. Hopefully uh, Friday. We're having a launch hope of Friday. Um, I think it'll probably happen. Um, certainly, if it's not, it'll be up by Monday. No, I think but, we can do but it. Friday looks like it'll be our launch day. Um, so we'll be back at work at that today. Uh, trying to get that finished up. Yeah. And do we have anything else? I saw I saw my notes. Okay. Blank page next. All right. <laughs> and uh, just a reminder that the website address will be rnrjourney.com, uh, just like our handle on uh, Facebook. Just like the hashtag and we use. With that, we will end it by saying, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, we'll guys. We'll see you tomorrow.